Hello YouTube, my name is Trey, welcome to Workout of Change. Today we're going to be looking into Ben Shapiro's video that he had put on X earlier. And I think it's very interesting because it has a lot to do with ad revenue and pushing politics and how it can affect you. So I think this will be good. Uh, if you like any of this, just go ahead and like it. If you want to subscribe, hey, go ahead and subscribe. That'd be cool. But if you don't want to, that's cool too. Uh, so you can go ahead and donate down here if you want to help with the production of the set. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Let's hop right into the video. DJ! DJ, I, I, I expect these things to be up when I uh, say, let's get it started, because then I look, end up looking stupid. There we go. Thank you. There's a group of people who control what you are allowed to see. The news you read, the videos you watch, the posts you engage with. You haven't heard of them. You don't know their names. But they determine through methods both direct and indirect whether you are allowed to be exposed to particular messages. Their decisions can bankrupt companies, silence voices, and fundamentally shift cultural norms. Who are these people and how do they do this? Well, at the top level, you have a network of global elites that has created a universal framework full of guidelines and ratings designed to enforce approved narratives and punish disapproved ones. It sounds like a conspiracy theory, except it isn't a secret and we're not guessing. Uh, what a beautiful intro. Listen, I want to say this. I don't know why. DJ, come on, man. You're not supposed to keep that up. Jeez. I want to say this before we even get really into it, man. I want to say this. Uh, I tell people this all the time when they decide if they want to go through this YouTube life, social media life. If you're in it for the money, you know, do what you got to do. But if you're in it to make a stand, make sure that's what you're in it for. Because you can make money and you can make a stand. But just know you're, you're going to have to be different ways. You can't come into this being jealous because somebody else makes money because they post certain content, but you decide to stand on something so you get demonetized and stuff like that. That's a part of the game, baby. That's a game we all going to have to play. Um, Got to kind of turn with it that monetization is not something you should let control you. There's so many people who are, they censor themselves on YouTube because they get too caught up in the money. That's why I think it's always important. Like I said before, it's not bad to have a nine to five. It's not bad to have a job where you get paid not on YouTube because if you do that, if you do this and you get all your life invested in YouTube before you have a secure enough money to where it doesn't matter, if you're just starting out and you're trying to depend all on YouTube, the second they demonetize you, you're going to be on camera crying. You're going to be on camera just breaking down. You're going to give up all your faith and everything because you put so much into this. I'm telling you guys, they are going to cut your money if you decide to stand on stuff. And, you know, I want to say this about uh, Berlin right quick. Berlizzi. Uh, he said that he knew when he got his channel taken down and got it put back up, he knew right then. And if y'all notice, he, you know, he can be inconsistent sometimes, but you notice that he said, I realize that this, this YouTube thing ain't going to be forever. At any moment, it could take it all. And that's what you have to realize. Back to the video. First, you have the World Economic Forum, WEF, and their platform for shaping the future of media, entertainment, and culture. Second, you have the World Federation of Advertisers, WFA, who represent mega corporations that control 90% of global advertising dollars. WFA members are a who's who of global business and include some of our recent wokeified favorites, like Bud Light's parent company, AB InBev, Hershey, Procter & Gamble, Lego, and Disney. There is barely a billionaire Fortune 500 CEO heavyweight philanthropist, government, or woke nonprofit that isn't associated with the WEF or the WFA. In 2019, the WFA established the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, or GARM. Within months, the WEF adopted GARM as part of its platform for shaping the future of media, entertainment, and culture. GARM is a cross-industry alliance that brings these mega corporations, the advertisers, together with big tech companies like Meta, who owns Facebook and Instagram, Google-owned YouTube, the CCP's TikTok, and even Snapchat and Pinterest. This unholy alliance created something they call the Brand Safety Floor and Suitability Framework. Think of brand safety as a dog whistle for censorship. They say it themselves. The Brand Safety Floor means, quote, content not appropriate for any advertising support. In other words, if you publish content that violates these guidelines, you will be blacklisted from 90% of the advertising revenue in the marketplace. 90% of the ad revenue you can be blacklisted from if you decide to go against brand safety. This is what I was saying when I was talking about Bud Light, right? 
I get Bud Light made a mistake and everything, but people are just blaming it on Bud Light. They don't think they don't. You've got to understand, man. And I'm not saying anything that most of y'all probably don't know. But in case you don't know, behind the scenes, man, behind all of this, behind all of this are some big dogs. OK, for be- lack of better words, you know, we people say elite stuff like that. But behind the scenes, they're the elites. They're the people who have the money that control a ton of where this money decides to go. So, of course, Bud Light decided to do the Dylan Mulvaney thing, but people are saying it's just a Bud Light thing. Like, they had a choice in the matter. Somebody told them to do that. There's somebody way above Bud Light, you know, and said, hey, you need to do what what you're going to do what we tell you to do. You send this can to Dylan, and I don't care about the repercussions. They don't care about the money that they lost. The people above? Because those people are making so much money, they barely even notice that blimp of Bud Light. Bud Light and the people who work for them, who are just average people who are just living their lives, they're going to have to suffer. But there's always an agenda being pushed. And it's not, and it's always by the elites because we know, you know, we know what we know. And at the end of the day, you got to understand that as many, many of y'all just want to live this life and y'all want free speech and y'all want everybody not to be censored, it comes with the cost. If you want your favorite YouTuber, you want your favorite artist or whatever to not be bland or vanilla and stand on stuff, know that that comes with money loss. Something you probably will never experience. and something I don't experience. I don't get censored because I don't get paid to do this stuff. So I don't know what the feeling's like. So I say whatever I really want to say because I don't care. But obviously, if this was my main income, I got to be business savvy. I can't be dumb. You got to give your message without giving the message. Daily Wire does it all the time. Right. Daily Wire, Prager you instead of putting everything out, they put it on their websites because they know YouTube is going to suppress them. So they'll make as much a little bread out they can as off of YouTube to put it back into the company or back into their contracts or whatever and put the money on a website. You can go subscribe over there and they'll get the money that way. But at the end of the day, YouTube is such a huge platform. You just you got to do what you got to do. So I'm not mad at people who censor themselves. But at the same time, it's not like they're trying to not say anything. If, if you want to hear what they got to say, you're going to have to pay for it somewhere else. Because YouTube is not going to give them any of this bread. And who wants to do that? Who's going to put stuff out just for it to get demonetized? That's crazy. You know? So, something to think about. 90%. (laughs) 90%, baby. So, what have these global elites decided to put in their censorship framework? It started with things we can almost universally agree on, like preventing the distribution of child pornography or the advocacy of graphic terrorist activity. But they don't draw the line at what is objectively criminal. Heck, we bear, I mean, we still seeing child stuff all the time now. To be fair, we see it on TikTok and everything. They pushing that boundary. They'll be more likely to um, show stuff that is predatory before they will show stuff that's um, saying a, a man could be a woman and a woman could be a man. You go against that, they're going to be on your tail. They're going to be right on your bumper. But if you talk about, you know, some crazy stuff, some minor stuff, some pedophile kind of stuff, Oh, they're not going to they're not going to say it until you get reported and not until people come out of uproar because they're not monitoring that as hard as they can. Because at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to say YouTube is pushing this kind of stuff or Instagram and all these places, but let's not be dumb. There's still money in the sex industry. There's money in the porn industry. So they're going to keep that money until they get caught. Instagram got caught not too long ago for having it all over the place until they finally got caught. There's always money, baby. The only thing they really want to stamp out is anything that keeps them from that. Let's keep it going. Abusive or dangerous. They continue expanding the guidelines to include far more subjective parameters. For example, the framework lists subjective terms like hate speech as a problem. It says that anything surrounding transgenderism that they decide is dehumanizing or discussing what they deem to be a debated social issue in an insensitive way is off limits. The framework is deliberately vague, allowing those in control to pick and choose how they enforce it and against whom. So, how exactly do the approved narratives set by these global entities get enforced all the way down to the daily content you consume, including maybe this video? Well, here's how. We'll start with NewsGuard. NewsGuard is an organization that formulates ratings for American media. They rank news sites on a 0 to 100 scale based on nine supposedly apolitical criteria. These criteria are anything but apolitical. They often align with left-wing positions. During the height of COVID, NewsGuard falsely labeled and downgraded 21 news sites, only well after the fact admitting that they either mischaracterized the site's claims about the lab leak theory, referring to the lab leak theory as a conspiracy theory, or wrongly grouped together unproven claims about the lab leak with the separate false claim that the COVID-19 virus was man-made. I love how they do it. They do that after everything has already happened, though. 
it, it's only after the fact that they've already ruined these people, right? They've already downgraded these news things. They come out later and say, oh, we were, we were sorry. They're not really sorry, man. They downgraded y'all in a time where it meant the most. And now it's dead already. By the time you get a chance to do it, it's dead. It's the same thing. You know, I'm not going to keep going into that. But it's the same thing we see what happens when people, when they unfalsely copyright somebody or something, they copyright strike them or something. They do that. And so by the time your video could have been making some strides, they killed your whole video. And then you have to wait 30 days just to dispute it. Right. And then 30. So they don't say anything for dirty 30 days. So by the time the 30 days is up, your video already died. It's dead by the time it gets a chance to come out, because when you're starting off, there's no way people are going to watch you because they don't know who you are. Only people who can get away with stuff like that, who can get away with the copyright quickly is the people who are bigger because people want to watch them. They have a better chance of going forward. But, you know, I'm not knocking those people. I'm just saying without explaining that one claim was unsubstantiated and the other was false. NewsGuard apologizes for these errors, they said. They have made the appropriate correction on each of the 21 labels. And when you compare their ratings of left-leaning news organizations to right-leaning news organizations, you see the same bias appear. The Media Research Center, a free speech nonprofit, studied NewsGuard's ratings. Here are the average ratings afforded to left and left-leaning outlets versus those on the right. The study found glaring examples of bias by NewsGuard. The left's BuzzFeed managed a 100 out of 100 perfect score, despite its reporting on the Steele dossier and alleging collusion between Trump and Russia. The study found that the Global Times, a Chinese propaganda government outlet, scored a 39.5. That is 27 points higher than the US-based conservative outlet, The Federalist. Despite a scandal at USA Today, revealing the publication of multiple fabricated sources in their stories and their own fact-checking operation misleading readers on the history of the Democratic Party and the KKK, USA Today maintained the 100 out of 100 rating by NewsGuard. NewsGuard is a trusted partner to Garm. They help ensure that ad buyers and users looking for news can be in safe and suitable places. Now I'm gonna give you a practical example of what this means for this show. For example, if I didn't add on this show, I'd have to do it with a company that doesn't make ad buying decisions according to Garm standards. A company not associated with Garm or NewsGuard that we love doing business with is a company called GenuCell. You've heard about GenuCell on my daily show. GenuCell has great products like their dark spot corrector. See, we sell our ad space based on a certain number of projected views. But unfortunately, due to Garm and NewsGuard, we now sell them at a reduced rate. As this is the very first episode of Facts, we're betting we've got our projected view count right for the sake of deals with future advertisers. But either way, we're thankful to be working with GenuCell, a company using cutting edge ingredients in products like their ultra retinal moisturizer with a retinal alternative for safe use in the sun. If you go to GenuCell.com slash Ben right now, you can get your dark spot corrector and ultra retinal moisturizer in the GenuCell most popular package. That's GenuCell.com slash Ben, GenuCell.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. I think it's very interesting that, he... man, it's just a, Man, it just the one thing that I would find exciting about doing the business side of this stuff. Well, I know this part sucks, you know, getting money taken away, but it's crazy how you have to plan out your entire video to be like, I, I projected that I talked to somebody about this one time and I was like, how do you do it? And they just use the website. But really, you have to project your views out. You have to be like, I think I'm going to get this many views, so I'm going to charge this much and that way I can do it. But you can't work with any company, right? There are certain companies you guys may notice that you see a lot of. You may see the same company doing the same people because they're not brand safe, right? People who are brand safe, they can pretty much do whatever ad they want to. Amazon, anybody from this to there. But if you get somebody who is like them, you you see them. I, I did a terrible pause there. News. The, they only can get brands from certain people. That's why you see it's brands that you probably never really heard of, Right. There's a lot of brands you've never heard of that they tend to go sponsor. Green Ruffs. Um, the, uh, what is it called? The Blaze Grill, Grill Blaze. Places I've never, in things I've never even heard of because they don't care about that because they don't go through storm. They don't go through news. But people, here's one thing I want y'all to understand, man. When it comes to this money thing, money, people think, and, I, and, and they're trying to get us to truly believe that money doesn't run everything, right? I'm not saying you should live your life for just money. But to foolishly say that money doesn't make it to where what you hear and what you see and what they want pushed to you doesn't matter. You're insane. What y'all see on y'all's TikTok, what y'all see on y'all's YouTube. I'm sorry, I, I speak from the social media side because that's what I'm involved in. What y'all see on the social media side, man, what y'all see on Facebook, what y'all see on X, what y'all see everywhere, it's pushed to you, friend. It's pushed to you because of a certain amount of money. We're going to talk about that at some point. 
But no matter what you do, when you get and you're looking at all these meme accounts and you see some random girl pop up or something, know that those OnlyFan models that you see on those meme accounts get paid. That's why you see all these random meme accounts on Instagram do the same thing where they push they push the same style. But at the end of it, you'll see some kind of ad like, come here if you want to make this kind of money. Or for the girls, though, well, I'll explain more, but it's always about money, right? Money does equal power. And you guys are sitting here trying to, you know, talk about anti being anti-capitalist and making your minimum wage and all that stuff. And I understand that and I get that. But understand that when you just just because you get your few little shekels don't mean it's a win, baby. It doesn't. Because it comes, everything comes at a cost. In economics, you learn there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you get if you get your money raised, your little minimum wage, everything's going to get more expensive. And if you get that stuff going, they're going to make sure that they're still targeting you when you get on your Instagram, when you go get on your TikTok. They're going to make sure that their messages are getting across to you. And so people focus so much on just trying to get their money to pay their bills when they don't realize what's really going out going on out here in the world and i completely understand that i'm not a man who makes a lot of money i live for the most part paycheck to paycheck i'm just being honest i don't make a lot right now you know i make i make what i make and so it's hard not to just get focused on the money but i'm just saying take a little time to make sure you are looking into politics don't get caught up in the whole i'm just not into politics it really shapes your world and your children Look into it, especially if you're starting to get older, man. There's no reason you should be in your 30s, 40s, and you're still worried about the new dance trend. Come on, get off of that, man. It's time for you to grow up. Get into these politics, get into this life, and see what's going on behind the scenes. Because you people are so quick to say y'all care about the world, but y'all don't look into any of this stuff. Y'all just sit back and just relax, watch your little cartoons, and think it's cool. They're trying to keep y'all childlike. Don't you get it? They want y'all to be partying. They want y'all to be drugging. They want y'all to stay in the cartoons. So when all these political agendas are getting silenced or these political agendas are getting pushed, you don't even notice it. Next thing you know, you're already rocking the flag in the back of your blood. Oh. <laughs> Let's get to the video. <laughs> Guard is also working with others to use AI technology to enforce brand safety standards at scale by identifying scalable hoaxes and misinformation in order to streamline blanket removal. This means that the news that you read, news that is supposed to be fair and objective or at least diverse, must adhere to GAR, the WEF, the WFA, and their subjective and biased standards in order to be deemed monetizable. If you think this is only something big news corporations have to contend with, think again. Even the content you consume from independent content creators on social media platforms, like the one on which you're watching this video, is subject to these globalist powers that be. So for example, my friend Matt Walsh, he was demonetized on YouTube. Why? Well, because he says that men are not women. The same was true on TikTok, another GAR member, where Daily Wire hosts... By the way, he is still demonetized. Matt Walsh is still demonetized. Whole channel demonetized. Doesn't make a sit off of YouTube. Every video. ...are routinely hit with content strikes and various bans for saying things like men are not women. Meanwhile, Dylan Mulvaney shoots up the TikTok algorithms by insulting women, saying day one of being a girl and I've already cried three times already. Blew or up. Blew up on TikTok. This is what they want to push on TikTok. We already know who runs TikTok, but that's another story. Why do they want to push this? Y'all got to start asking yourselves these questions. Why do you think Dylan rose to the top and then people who were just had an opinion against it got banned? For example, that's if you question the accepted wisdom on COVID. So, for example, let's say you say that the vaccine's not great for kids. No evidence kids need them. Kids aren't dying from COVID. If you say any of those things, GARM, WEF, WFA, they will crack down on you with alacrity. In addition to looking at how companies and creators are punished for violating these standards, it's also important to look at what is considered brand safe. In other words, what narratives are 90% of advertising revenue dollars working to advance? So, for example, advertisers like Procter & Gamble, who advertise with Mulvaney, consider Mulvaney safe. As opposed to the what, daily... What did I just say? What did I just say? When you people see stuff like Bud Light and all that... percent of advertising revenue dollars working to advance. So, for example, advertisers like Procter & Gamble, who advertise with Mulvaney... Y'all think Olay is the brand that's pushing Dylan. It's Procter & Gamble. Sorry, I said that with a hard P, but... Procter and Gamble, all of these places, and, and even Procter and Gamble is under somebody, but there are parent companies that push this stuff, not the company themselves that we see. Well, you got to remember, we're the average people. 
When we see Bud Light, when we see a box of Cheez-Its, we don't see who owns the box of Cheez-Its. We think Cheez-Its as a brand. We think Cheeto Puffs as a brand. We don't think about the people who own them, like the Frito-Lays company. We don't think about who owns Frito-Lays and all the chips. When you go to the store and you're looking at all this cereal and you're looking at all this junk food, y'all think it's all these different companies. Oh, no, baby. They're all owned by the same people, Right. We go to the go to the store. Look at all the boxes of cereal. You think Kellogg's and General Mills are different people? No, the same people are invested in those same boxes of cereal. It's somebody at the top. Okay, there's, like we said before, there's the vanguards and stuff like that. It's a manipulation tactic, man. They make y'all think there's so many different brands out there, but the money's all going to the same people. So that's why you see the same companies push the same agenda. Mulvaney, consider Mulvaney safe as opposed to the Daily Wire, which is not considered brand safe and thus would never be supported by the same advertiser. Brand safety regulations inform culture. In some ways, they actually fund culture, like GAR member Bud Light sending a personalized girlhood beer can to Dylan Mulvaney, or GAR member Lego declaring gender is non-binary and making trans-themed Lego designs, or GAR member Hershey's using a male and a women's Black chocolate Rock. ad, or GAR member P&G's- BlackRock, BlackRock is the other company I always forget to say, BlackRock. Razor Brand Gillette, which pushed toxic masculinity narratives and taught dads how to shave their daughter's beard. These are all endeavors deemed to be brand safe for companies to engage in and not risk being either deprived of others' advertising dollars or having their advertising dollars turned away. By contrast, Jeremy's Razor's not a brand safe partner. Bud Light isn't going to be sending a flannel shirt to Matt Walsh. Matt is not brand safe. Abigail Schreier can't advertise her book on Amazon. It contains objectionable content about sexual orientation, but Amazon will allow paid ads for things like chest binders and pro-trans books. Didn't, what did I say? What did I say? About Amazon, you're not just going to be able to get anything. That's why you're not going to see Amazon who, um, they, they're not going to be on every single body's uh, brand safe um, ads on YouTube. That's why you see some people who do the same type of ads. That's why they do the, you see the black, the black community over here on YouTube. They're always going to do the same. Uh, what's the name of that company they keep using? Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's always the face cream. It's always the same face cream, the same, get your moisturizer, your hair, all that kind of stuff. Same company every single time. But those are, I'm talking about the ones that are against pushing against the culture. Right. Uh, and that's the same thing you're going to see when it comes to Jeremy's razors. Right. Same thing you're going to see when you hear about these companies you ain't never going to hear about ever in your life because nobody puts them on their YouTube videos because they are brand safe. Y'all used to hear this about uh, what Will Smith when he had first started out, um, the, the comedian that came out that said um, Will Smith is brand safe. Right. Drake is brand safe because th those guys aren't going to push any political agenda at all. They're going to keep their mouth shut and do what they're supposed to do. Kevin Hart. Brand say, keep his mouth shut, do what he's supposed to do. So what does all this mean? Why should you care? Well, like any other business, the news media, we have to be able to make money by producing the news. Fact checkers are now incentivizing media outlets to comply with the WEF GARM narratives by determining what is and what is not monetizable. The WEF, GARM, the WFA, they're all actively working with social media companies to censor what they consider to be misinformation, which very often is just good information with which they disagree. Finally, the WEF, the WFA, GARM, they're all aggressively pouring billions of dollars a year into news and content that drives their preferred narrative. Narratives that are often counterfactual at best and harmful at worst. When you look at the news, you need to feel as though you're getting all the information. And even if one source isn't giving you all the information, you can check another source. And all those sources together will give you a broad view of the world. But the World Economic Forum, the World Federation of Advertisers, I want to say this video is almost over. You know, I'll just say it after the answer. And the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, they don't want you to have a full view of the news. They want you to see what they want you to see. And they will work to prevent anyone from disseminating information they don't pre-approve. They are determining what you see, what you hear, what you watch. And that's dangerous. Oh, great video. I want to say this, guys. He made a good point there at the end. You should be able to just go to the source to source to source. Um, I want to say this as well, because you are going to get more agendas pushed to you than you are for the side you may think is morally correct. Also, man, and this is something that I, I, I try to do myself. It's hard not to only look at, for me, it's hard not to only look at one side of the coin because I, I tend to go off 
you know, my faith. So I tend to lean obviously in a certain direction when it comes to certain things, such as trans surgery and stuff like that. At the same time, I have to understand the argument. I can't put myself in such an echo chamber that I don't know the facts because if I don't know why people want to push it, even if there's a ridiculous reason, I still need to know why it is. Because if you don't, if you don't know what the other side is trying to push and why they're doing it, you're going to look like a fool. And I try not to make myself look like a fool. So if an argument gets brought to me, I want it to be an argument I've already heard and I've looked into and I've already been able to go, okay, I can see what you're saying in this, but here's my arguments against that. Because if you, if I only put myself in the echo chamber and I only go off my own logic, which is very dangerous, I'm going to look like a fool and I'll be useless. I'll be a useless tool because I only believe what I believe. I need to look into people, even, you know, and, and I want to say this. Hey man, I make, I make content too. I make videos too. And it's hard for me to always look into even people who are on my side and look at them and watch their videos. Why? Because dude, I make the same kind of content, but they've been doing it for much longer. But, you know, I want a piece of that pie. I want the same audience. You know, I want to be able to reach these people, but I know I can't. I'm just not there yet. It's going to be another five, six, seven years before I can even probably reach even close to what they're reaching. And so there is some part of me that envies it. But at the same time, there's something I don't understand. It's what comes with this. We've seen with Matt Walsh how many times he's been threatened, how many people say they're going to show up to his house, how many times he's been doxxed, he's demonetized from YouTube. Do you really want that life? Do you really want to, every time you get on the internet, somebody's going to be like, hey, I'm going to take off your effing head and I'll kill you. Do you want that every single day? Do you want that? Do you want people to know where you live? Do you want people to be like, hey, at any moment I might show up to your house because there's some deranged people out there? So at any moment, you got to have 24 sec 24-7 security around your crib? Do you, is that what you want? Is that the life you want to live? That's what I have to keep teaching my, uh, telling myself. is If I really want that, and I put in the work to get that, is that something I want? Just like being a celebrity, being famous. Now, some of them, you know, they do the weird things. But imagine being famous. You can't go to your Walmart. You can't just leave your house. People are going to be watching you 24-7, waiting for you to let your guard down. You walk out the house and without a security guard, blow! You know? And I don't mean just, I don't mean like a gunshot. I mean like a somebody could just roll up on you, you start beating you or berating you or just doing, and your children are going to have a hard time at school. The teachers are probably going to hate them if they went to public school. You probably going to have to homeschool your kids if you get to this amount of notoriety. Are you willing to die on that hill? Because not everybody is. I get that. And I don't even know if I am. I'm talking out my butt cheeks right now because I have no idea what it's like to live that life. For the most part, nobody knows who I am. I can say whatever I want until I can't, until eventually YouTube maybe comes after me and says, hey, you need to shut your mouth. I'm tired of hearing about this. And then people get on me and get on X and all that kind of stuff. And they come after me and attack me. And then who knows what I do? Do I run away? I don't know. I always like to say I, I wouldn't because I've been through this on a small on a small scale i've been through this before where back in the day if you guys who, who obviously didn't know me i was on instagram and i was trying to do the right thing and all this stuff and man i got so many hate comments man i got so many people coming after me i got blocked so many times i mean people just hated me because of what i was talking about when the fat acceptance came out and i was really on that that uh, tirade so man all i'm saying is after all of this i'm hearing and the more I continue to learn, and like I said, you need to get into this. Stop sitting on your couch every single day, eating Cheeto puffs, watching anime. Not against anime, obviously. I'm not against video games. I play my fair share of video games, and I do those kind of things. But to, to ignore the world and try to live in your bubble, the older you get, you just can't do that. The news outlets out there are pushing certain agendas. And you're watching certain people who have to censor themselves that they get banned or demonetized. And you, some of you guys, y'all cheer for it. Y'all like, oh, I'm so happy he got demonetized because your life sucks, right? You ain't making no bread, so of course you want to see other people fail because they stand on something, but you sit at the house eating Cheeto puffs, doing nothing with your life, not standing on nothing, but you have you want to go get on your little ex account. And t I'm just saying, there's a bigger world out here that you need to let go. Let go of your pride for a second. Let go of your ego for a second and just get involved. Start helping your community. Start going to your board meetings in your city. Start doing something. Or if you, or at the end of the day, I, you shouldn't even open your mouth. If you're not even trying to, I'm not saying you got to be on the front lines, but if you're not even trying to get in line at all, you might as well just be quiet and just watch the world. And you know, whatever happens, happens. You're just going to go with the flow, but that's going to be a dangerous life, buddy. 
everybody that thinks they want to live in this world of peace and love and just go with the flow, just what, like we're trying to see, it doesn't, it, it's never going to go that way. Life is always going to come with kind of some kind of sacrifice. You're going to have to stand for something eventually. You will have to stand for something. I don't know a whole lot of people, even people who are average people like myself. When I was growing up in a small town, there was a lot of people in our city that had to stand for something. Had to. You can't just sit around. This is just a matter of time before you start watching everything crumble around you. So anyway, man, nice little video talking about the ad revenue. And, you know, I'll say this too, man. I'm already going to say this. If I ever was, people say if I ever get enough followers, I don't know if that'll ever happen. But I already know it's not going to mean much. I'm not going to put my eggs into this YouTube basket because I already know I'm probably going to get demonetized the second I start it up. You know, if I ever get monetized, the second YouTube realizes what kind of content I make, I'll probably never make money off this thing. So I'm always going to have to do this for the love of the people. And I'm cool with that, man. I'm fine if I'm going to have to work a nine to five and make my little bread. Um, but I'll keep making more money, you know. Um, that's why you. That's why I went to college. That's why I did all this stuff and build skills and what way I can make money and never have to put all my um life into one basket i told you guys i would love to do what ben shapiro does do what the daily wire does prayer you does these other companies that are starting up i want to work for a company that, and i can do this where i don't have to rely off of just youtube i'll put in all the work and the effort i can but i can't help it if youtube says no you can't talk about transgenderism you can't talk about marriage you can't talk about being gay you can't talk about being lesbian you just have to do whatever and they're just going to sign with me because i'm a catholic man i mean it is what it is but it is what it is gotta live with it so anyway, just be prepared for what you just saw, man. There's always somebody behind the curtain running all that money who's ready to silence every single one of us. And please, if you're on TikTok, if you're on X, if you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook, Snapchat, whatever, please realize what's getting peddled to you and then ask yourself why. Ask yourself, why do they want me so hard to protect trans kids? Why do they want me so hard to protect this LGBT cult? Why do they want me to do all this? Why do they want me to took a form? Why do they want me to be single? Why do they want me to be unmarried? Why do they want me to have sex with so many people? Why do they want me to allow children to be in adult situations? Ask yourself these questions. And if you had to say, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be into this. Get involved. Peace.